Introducing award-winning author David M. Schwartz. Math plus science plus literature equals fun. A live presentation for children about math, science, and the love of books. Are you ready for math? I'm David Schwartz. I'm an author. I've written 50 books for children. Most of them have math or science themes. And I also speak at lots of schools. My name is Claire Scott, and I'm the librarian at a small, diverse public elementary school. And I first became aware of David through his terrific books. Um, he wrote one that came out in 1985 called How Much is a Million? And this one, of course, every elementary school librarian knows it's a, no it's a book that we use very, very frequently in younger grades, but also for older kids to teach number concepts. So as the kids got more and more excited about these books, we invited David to come and speak. And welcome to Mr. David M. Schwartz. What's the big deal about big numbers? Well, I'll tell you. The big deal about big numbers is that I love them. I have loved big numbers since I was a little boy, since I was your age. In kindergarten, first grade, second grade. That's when I started to love big numbers. In fact, when I was in first grade, I loved big numbers so much that I drove my teacher crazy. <laughs> I went up to my first grade teacher one day. I said, Mrs. Lambert, how many hairs do you think I have on top of my head? She said, I don't know. We've had a lot of kids really love the book Super Grandpa because it tied into our school discussions about stereotypes. I'm going to tell you the beginning of the story, and I want you to listen for, what do you think? Number. Well, one morning, Gustav read something very exciting. He read that there was going to be a long bike race, a bicycle race 1,000 miles long. And when Gustav read that, he said, ah. This is the race for me. I'm going to enter this 1,000 mile bike race. But everybody else said, Gustav, you're 66. You can't ride 1,000 miles. You're too old. Did he think he was too old? No. Do we use a lot of numbers in the story? Yes. You think it would be very good if we left out all the numbers? There's so much we wouldn't know. We wouldn't know how old he was or how long the race was or how far he went to get there, right? Lots of things. So numbers, we use them in so many ways, even in stories, on so many days, really every day. If you hop like a frog, same thing. Even though the text was a very simple text that was accessible to even the youngest readers, the additional information in the back about the proportions and how the math was done made it interesting for readers of all ages. I was watching the frogs one day and I started to wonder about them. I wonder how good of a hopper is that frog for its size? We've discovered that the frog was three inches long, and let's hold him up to the ruler again. And after I learned that, I let the frog go, and it took a hop. And I found out that my three-inch frog could hop five feet, 60 inches. And I said, that's amazing. A three-inch frog goes 60 inches. How many of its own size does it hop? Okay, what do you get? She says 20. Anybody else say 20? What is three inches times 20? Yeah, so the frog is going 20 of itself or 20 times itself. So anyway, here's little Davy, four feet, six inches. And if he could have hopped like a frog, he could have hopped how many of these? The frog hops 20 of its size, so if I hop like a frog, I would hop 20 of my size, right? 20 of these. Well, let's see what that would look like if I could hop 20 of my size. Let's measure out 20 little Davies. Every class from kindergarten through fifth grade was excited about this book. And the best nonfiction picture book for children is a really, really terrific one to do with classes. Each class 
would read the poem and we integrated this into our regular curriculum of poetry and science. So of course they've learned all about camouflage, they've learned all about poetry and for National Poetry Month we focused on this as one of our core texts. We had the kids read the poem, think about what animal those clues might provide, and then find the camouflaged animal here, and then learn some more facts about them. Where in the wild? So you know this is a book about animals that hide with their colors. What do we call that? Do you see it in the picture? Do you see it? Okay. Now, now put your eyes on where you think it is, and you know in the book you open the flap to be able to see the animal. We'll open the flap here, and there it is. If you swallowed like a snake, okay? You know, when a snake catches its prey, does it take little bites out of it? No. Now, what does it do? It swallows it whole, right. Yeah, now, show me twice the width of your head. Move one hand out to where another head would come to. Good. Okay, now. The distance between your hands is twice as wide as your head. Put your hands in front of your face. This would be the size of your lunch. Now swallow it. Go ahead. Swallow it. Ah. Can you do Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. I love the way you're doing that. You all know this book right here? Yeah. It's How Much is a Million. This is a book about big what? Numbers. Exactly. Big numbers. Numbers like million. And a number that's a thousand times as big as a million, which is a billion. And then a number a thousand times as big as a billion, which is a billion. Yeah, these are big numbers. But just like with my alphabet books, which are for kids your age, I wanted a counting book for kids your age, older kids, right? Not just one, two, three, four, five, six. But I wanted a counting book that went up to a million and beyond. The story in this book is the story of some kids in a school having a snack. And their snack is popcorn. It's starting to fill up their classroom. They decide to pull out the plug, but it's stuck. It won't come out. And now the popcorn is filling the room, and they decide, all right, we better go out, get out of here. They go out the door, but so does the popcorn. It fills the entire school. And these kids have a question. You know what their question is? How much popcorn do we have? So the professor sees the, the kids counting the popcorn. He says, ah, I see what you're doing. You have a whole school, and it's just full of popcorn, and you're counting it all by, and you're only up to, you're never going to get it all counted like that. But don't worry, he says. There are other ways you could count. They say, hey. We could get there even faster if we started to count by... So they do it ten times. Ready to help me? Here we go. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000. We're up to 1,000. Ten of these. How much popcorn? <laughs> 10,000 pieces of popcorn. 400,000. 500,000. Now up here, okay? 600,000. 700,000. 800,000, 900,000, 1 million! You're right, it's a lot easier. And that's why the scientist, the professor, wants them to write it that way. Because he does. He's just like you and me. He's lazy. He does it the easy way. Does anybody know the special name for these little numbers? Uh, they do have a special name. You can just tell me. What's the name? Good for you. One million pieces of popcorn that they had popped for me. I was on TV. My, that picture was in the newspaper. If you want to see that picture again, go to my website, davidschwartz.com. You come to the home page, looks like this. And then, see that? That's my left foot. Click on my left foot. And you'll get to see 10,000, 
A hundred thousand, remember that giant band? And a million pieces of popcorn again. Hey, thanks a million, everybody. You've been a great audience. It was just awesome. I was like chuckling all the time in the back row because it was hilarious. <laughs> it was so cool. I loved it so much. And the numbers got me dizzy, but then I thought about them again and I said, okay. There's a new idea growing round these days People plugging into a big math craze The fun is multiplying, the product is so satisfying Everybody's working out the basic calculations Addition and subtraction, integers and fractions Before your head explodes, my friend, you can take some math action So let's get crazy, crazy for math So very, very crazy, crazy for math Get lots of all the numbers, be keen to make it count Get into the groove and figure it out Get crazy, crazy for math Now Ptolemy, Hypatia and Archimedes Were the first brainiacs with hypotheses Good old Isaac Newton said gravity worked out fine Galileo had the numbers on the universe Zeno said think about the paradox first They were the coolest mathomaniacs of their time Cause they were crazy Crazy for math So very very crazy Crazy for math They helped to discover everything we know They never stopped asking what made the world go They were crazy Crazy for math